evening. And can I say thank you for staying? It's been a long, productive day. I could only stay for part of it, but it sounded fantastic. I'm Sally. I've been asked to lead us in a brief reflection and, and time of worship. So take a moment and gather yourselves into this space. And before we worship, the call to worship has a sung response. And you'll want to sing loudly to drown me out, but I will teach it to you. It's very straightforward. And you will see the words that you will hear are walking with us, working with us, wondering with us. And then there's the sung refrain. And it goes like this. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. And there are four different responses. You will see them on the slide. Wisdom, justice, in compassion, and completion, and they'll be different, but you'll see them as, as we go. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Wisdom with us from the beginning. Stay with us now. Walking with us working with us, wondering with us. Through our lives and by our prayers, your wisdom come. What does the Lord require of us but to do justice? Justice isn't just that simple. It builds on the cornerstone of wisdom that listens to the lost, the lonely, the left out, and leans on love that's brave enough to learn from those with lived experience of being left behind. Justice isn't just that simple. But walking with us, working with us, wondering with us. Through our lives and by our prayers, your justice come. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion. Compassion calls us out of ourselves and our closed off comfortable clubs. And it calls us into the world, widening our welcome beyond what we imagined ever possible. Walking with us, working with us, wondering with us. Through our lives and by our prayers, your compassion come. And wisdom is with the humble, the integrity of the upright guides them. You know, I think integrity is an interesting word. Honor and honesty, righteousness and reliability dance within the confines of a definition. But perhaps God's completeness is a more durable understanding. Walking with us, working with us, wondering with us. Through our lives and by our prayers, your completeness come. And let us pray. Grappling together in gray areas, 
filtering the noise to not miss muffled voices, painfully prioritizing limited resources when need seemed never ending. Generous God, you call us to follow love and lead from the inside out. Listening to understand, not simply respond. Debating decisions without getting derisory. Practicing what we preach and embodying our values. Generous God, you call us to follow love and to learn well. And we are asked to offer our thanks to each other for a sometimes thankless task. Solidarity in our common struggles. Prayers for solution-focused political collaboration. And a commitment to work for the good of all of us. Even those who aren't here yet. Generous God, you call us to follow love and to lead and listen and learn from the inside out. Amen. And we're going to sing a song I hope you know. And luckily, I have two wonderful friends who've agreed to come and help us with the music. So this is a song by Trina Murray, Sheena Murray, and it's called For Everyone Born, A Place at the Table, and I'll keep clicking through. And you can stand or sit or whatever floats your boat. It's the end of the day.
justice and joy. Thank you. When I was looking at readings for this afternoon, I decided to go a little bit rogue. And so I want to share a poem with you. It was commissioned for the opening of the Scottish Parliament. It is a poem called Open the Doors, and it's by Edwin Morgan. And it may have been written 25 years ago, and it may be focused on a building. But that's not what this poem is about. And I think it resonates just as strongly, maybe even more strongly today than it would have 25 years ago. I'm going to ask Chloe to come and share it with us. There's no space here. <laughs> Little bits of paper I've been handed. Um, open the doors, light of the day. Shine in, light of the mind, shine out. We have a building which is more than a building. There is a commerce between inner and outer, between brightness and shadow, between the world and those who think about the world. Is it not a mystery? The parts cohere. They come together like petals of a flower. Yet they also send their tongues outwards to feel and taste the teeming earth. Do you want classic columns and predictable pediments, a growl of Gothic grandeur, a blissfully boring box? Not here, no thanks. No icon, no Ikea, no iceberg, but curves and caverns, nooks and niches, huddles and heavens, syncopations and surprises. Leave symmetry for the cemetery. But bring together slate and stainless steel, black granite and gray granite, seasoned oak and sycamore, concrete blonde and smooth as silk. The mix is almost alive. It breathes and beckons. Imperial marble, it is not. Come down the mile, into the hearts of the city, past the Kirk of St Giles and the closes and wines of the noted ghosts of history, who drank their claret and fell down the steep tenement stairs into the arms of link boys, who wrote and talked the starry enlightenment of their days. Before them, the old makers, who tickled a Scottish king's ear with melody and ribaldry and frank, and frank advice. And when you were there, down there in the midst of things, not set upon a hill with your nose in the air, that is where you know your parliament should be. And this is where it is, just here. What do the people want of the place? They want it to be filled with thinking. Persons as open and adventurous as its architecture. A nest of theatres is what they do not want. A symposium of procrastination of procrastinators is what they do not want. A phallus for lock tuggers is what they do not want. And perhaps above all, the droopy mantra of it wasn't me is what they do not want. Dear friends, dear lawgivers, dear parliamentarians, you are picking up a thread of pride and self-esteem that has been almost, but not quite, or not quite, not ever broken or forgotten. When you convene, you will be reconvening with a sense of not wholly the power not yet wholly the power, but a good sense of what was once in the honour of your grasp. All right, don't forget, or forget or don't forget the past. Trumpets and robes are fine, but in the present and the future you will need something more. What is it? We, the people, cannot tell you yet, but you will know about it when we do tell you. We give you our consent to govern, don't pocket it and ride away. We give you our deepest, dearest wish to govern well. Don't say we have no mandate to be so bold. We give you this great building. Don't let your work and hope be other than great. When you enter and begin, so now begin. Open the doors 
and begin. A more conventional reading from the Gospel of Matthew in the NRSV translation. Matthew 7, 24, verses 24 to 27. So Jesus speaking at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And it is not part of the inspired text, but nevertheless in this translation, the passage is given the heading here as undoers. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Thank you both. I also wanted to give you time to just reflect and digest. And so I have asked a wonderful friend to come and sing. And again, this was a song um, sung at the Scottish Parliament at its opening. Kirsty. But an honest man's a 
Thank you, Kirsty. I really appreciate you being here. 25 years, a quarter of a century. Well, that's a blink in the eon of human existence, but in our limited span, it's a time when a generation of infants have somehow morphed into young adults. The world we were born into has evolved grown and shrunk and changed shape like that lava lamp I had as a kid. What people just a couple of generations ago toiled over, we can do with the press of a button. Well, some of us can. And that's where the landscape takes on familiar, well-worn terrain, sadly. You've gathered to mark the time. And as we continue our commitment to more collaboration, more conversation, more dreaming and following those dreams with doing something to give fertile ground to those usually shoved to the margins, it is important that we ask the question again and again and again. How? On the mace given to the Scottish Parliament 25 years ago, there are values inscribed, and they've echoed through this day and this space set aside to ponder. Wisdom, justice, compassion, integrity. What does that mean? Deep, solid, Challenging foundations, yes. And they're interlocking, they're intrinsically linked. You can't pull them apart, and they balance and nuance each other. Deep foundations that anchored and still anchor a building meant to bend and evolve and shape itself around us to a shelter, a sanctuary, a ground floor from which we can soar. So really the word building as a noun doesn't quite cut it. Actually, the building we're looking for is a verb. We are building, not static and stationary, but moving, embracing, encouraging, and enfolding the best of all of us for the good of all of us. We are building, willing to move over, seed the space to give room for other things to grow, other people to grow. We are building, not walls of prejudice, privilege, and promotion of self-interest, but bridges that welcome people in and welcome people back. Bridges that make it possible to begin the journey across the chaos and chasm of poverty, oppression, 
climate injustice and systemic injustice that stops imagination in its tracks. 25 years building a movement. And today's gathering can be seen as our coming to a crossroads. And when you come to a space like that, it is important to stop and look back and learn from the path. To learn from the communities dotted around this new road you've traveled. Who's flourishing and who's not and why? Are we going in the right direction? Where do we need to shift? What baggage needs to be put down? And what do we need with us as we journey on? It's time to look around. Who's with us and who have we left behind and why? I would hope that we are learning as a church. Please, God, help us learn that we are not a building. Really, the word building as a noun cannot capture us, should never capture us. And oftentimes, it does. No, we are building. We are building. Not static and stationary, but moving, embracing and encouraging and enfolding the best of all of us for the good of all of us. Wisdom, justice, compassion, integrity. I don't know about you, but I think there's something missing there. But we all bring it with us. We've all been gifted it by God. Love. Love. And actually, it's not missing, but is what holds the foundations themselves and lets them bend and become. So as we leave this place, let's recommit ourselves to bending, to becoming, to seeding space so that other things can grow, so that other people can grow. Amen. We're going to sing a closing hymn, and then I believe that there is a drinks reception for all of you can warm up. So we're going to sing a final hymn, and it's Jesus Christ is Waiting. And again, do what you want. Jesus Christ is waiting.
So the worship is over. Let the service begin. Beloved of God, go in peace. And may the God who loves you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with you. This day and forevermore. Amen.